would like to welcome everybody to the show today. I am back with brand new shows and ready to kick this year off. Thank you for joining me for Let's Talk About It with Xavier Fox. Get ready for this journey on Monday mornings, Thursday and Friday afternoons. Tune in and be ready to laugh and learn. Learn other viewpoints on relationships, information on health and fitness, investing, sex, and much more. Today, licensed marriage counselor Khalid Scott explores the psychology of an affair. And I cannot wait to hear what he has to say about this. It's going to be good. <clears throat> I know that already. Then it's our girl, attorney April Prayer. Her legal show gets us all the way together. Today, she plans to touch on some of the high profile cases in the news, as well as some of the things you need to know about conceal and carry so you don't wind up in jail. Now, if you would like to participate on the show today, feel free to zoom in using the link, which can be found on my Facebook page, Xavier Fox, or join the public Facebook group, Let's Talk About It with Xavier Fox, where you can get all the info and interact with the personalities on the show. Go to xaviafox.com backslash radio dash show for the schedule of the month of January to see when your favorite personality or topic is scheduled. So now let's get to it. How you be today, Khalid? I am doing well, Lady X. How are you doing today? I am great. I am great. Just trying to get this computer thing to cooperate with me over here. You got a, <clears throat> a full room as usual. <laughs> and you're taking Welcome up my everyone. Whole, you're taking up the whole screen over here. I can't maneuver in the studio. <laughs> so I am really Absolutely. excited. I'm excited about your show today. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you kick it off because I want to get every minute in. I'm sure I'm gonna have some questions along the way. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, you know, um this conversation <clears throat> um, we had a discussion what a few months ago right and yep. you know just started off with the discussion of just why is just infidelity such a commonplace with us you know we understand the devastation that it causes families and communities and but why do we partake in it you know it is like the number one activity you right. know, for all of us, you know, to, 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 to step out of our committed relationship and find lust and sometimes love on the outside. And, and yeah, and that, that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to throw in there, too, because sometimes you actually do find love on over there. They find love. I haven't done it myself. But I had a lady <laughs> show up at one of my shows when I used to tape the shows live um, back in the day. Right. And um, she met her <clears throat> husband at work and he was married at the time. He did wind up divorcing his then wife, married her, and they were married for decades until he died. So maybe sometime we married the wrong person. I don't know. I'm gonna let you go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, again, I wanna just throw out this disclosure before I get started, because you know, this hour is gonna go back quickly. Mm -hmm. um, that this comes from a place, not only my personal experiences, but professional experiences. And there might be a whole bunch of people who may disagree with me, but one of the things that I tell everyone and I challenge people, listen to what I have to say, ponder it, med uh, meditate on it, marinate on it. And when you really think about it, you'll hear or you'll think and say, wow, that was a good point. And I understand that this is a subject matter that hurts a whole lot of people. Yeah. And it should. And it should. And I'm not here and you're not here to glamorize infidelity and people having affairs. What we want to talk about is the why. And then what can we do to stop it? You know? Yep. And um, I'll start off that, you know, I remember participating in... um. Um, Art Chat Daddy's um, um, relationship chats back in the late 90s, right? So one day I was there and um, I said something that was very provocative. And I mean, it tore the room up when I said it. And it was a simple statement. It was all men cheat. 
Mm. And when I said that, oh, wow, you would have thought I went up to heaven to smack black Jesus. <laughs> okay? And I mean, people were rolling their eyes, cursing. I, I thought I was going to be murdered that night. Thank God I lived across the street at um, Lake Meadows <laughs> where I could run home after the chat, you know. But what I understood is that back even back then, and I was an early clinician back then, is that one, I made the statement to be provocative. That was very on purpose. Because it made people, what? What? Yeah. How dare you? Uh -uh. Not my daddy, not my uncle, not my granddaddy, not my husband. I said, give me five minutes with whoever you just listed, and I will tell you his mistress name. And I will tell you your siblings that you don't even know about. Wow. And so people were like, ooh, ah. And the thing is, the reason why I want to be provocative with that statement, because I want people to understand that this is serious. Infidelity, people having affairs, people stepping out on their committed relationships have destroyed us. It has destroyed our community. It has destroyed how men look at women and how women look at us men. Mm -hmm. And it's across all races, all genders. So you can't think, oh, only black men do it, only white men do it, Asian men do it, Indian men do it, Hispanic men do it. They're known for doing it. But what happens is it gets high, it, 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 it's kind of um, the expectation. Mm -hmm. And they and their women have learned to kind of like, mm, let me navigate it as long as my needs are being met. So let me, I was at, this was years ago, I was at a 50th anniversary party, right? And I was there with a date with my girlfriend at the time, and this was back in the 90s. And we were sitting at the table, and at the table uh, was me and my girlfriend and a, and, 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 and a lot of uh, um, older couples, right? Okay. And um, um, someone brought up how the, 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 in this 50 year um, um, anniversary that the husband was a habitual cheater. Oh, that's right? a nice time. Somebody to brought that. it up at the table. You know, because <laughs> black folks, we get real comfortable when we get that libation in us. <laughs> you know, and we, we have loose tongues, right? And so. My date and a couple of the younger women who were at the table, they was like, I would never take what mama and auntie and grandmama dealt with. You know, if somebody cheats on me, I'm out of there. Well, three of the older women, the older crowns, which I call them, they sat at the table and they was like, look here, young girls. Look mm. here. You see the three men sitting next to y'all? They probably, when they drop y'all off tonight, they're going to go and see their other women. So get that clear first. Second of all, you right. Auntie, grandmama, and mom, and all the rest of us, we've allowed our husbands to go out and cheat on us, but they understood to bring that paycheck home every two weeks. We have the big, beautiful houses out in Olympia Fields and, and, and Crestwood and Schomburg. So, yeah, we let daddy go and do his thing, but he understood he had an obligation to come home and take care of his family. Because at the end of the day, none of us women can ever stop a man from doing what he wants to do. When that woman got done, those three girls had to get up, including my date, and go to the bathroom. I bet they did. <laughs> because they got checked royally. And us guys, we sat there like, oh, wow, we're going to get it when we get in the car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what happens is what grandma and aunties were saying was that we can't stop um, grandpa and uncle Walter and big daddy Daryl to do what he's going to do. But long as he takes care of the business here, 
And if you think you're that powerful as a woman to stop a man from doing what he wants to do, well, you better be able to fight. You better come up with the cure for cancer and the cure for COVID right now. So can I, can I, it ain't going to happen. Can I hop in here real quick? Cause I, yes, please. Yes, I please. have, a, um, I, and I talked about this on my page and you may even know what I'm about to say, because when <laughs> I, when I got certified as a coach, we had to do a lot of studying and we studied a lot of religions and we studied cultures and we studied ways of life and we studied a whole lot of things. And um, in addition to that, I'm a documentary person. I like to watch the documentary. So one of the things that I've heard repeatedly, I know a lot of people don't agree with it, but it doesn't really matter because it is science. And that is that humans are not naturally monogamous. We're just not right. naturally monogamous. Women right. tend to be more monogamous if they have children. Uh, just like the the animals. So even animals, most animals are not monogamous. I think there's a monkey. I think geese are monogamous. There's a few animals that are monogamous, but humans are not naturally monogamous. Now we have a brain so we can choose to be monogamous, yes. but we will always yes. have that desire. And even in choosing to be monogamous, we still are not monogamous in the original meaning of monogamous, which was one mate for life. And when that mate died, you did not do anything else. It was one mate for life, period. That was it. We are what they right. call serial monogamous. We choose a person to be monogamous with for this 10-year period, and then we break up with them, and then we choose to be monogamous with another person. So we take monogamy as individual relationships versus monogamous, which meant one for life. We, meet, we take it as one at a time. <clears throat> okay. So... Okay. I'm when when those ladies said that, that's exactly where my brain went was that I think the further we get away from because you understand that when you read your Bible, all the kings had uh, multiple wives and concubines. And if you really want to Google it, and I, I did and posted it one year on my Facebook page, there is a start time for monogamy. Monogamy is a man-made concept. It was not one person from the beginning there were a, a poly polygamous and then there's uh what is that a polygyny which is cultures where it is one woman with multiple men okay it's not yeah. just a man thing that, and we are only one of nine countries i think that even attempt to practice monogamy and one of the documentaries that i watched they said that monogamy has failed miserably yes yes Yes, because you know what, and, and great points you bring up, Xavier, but the reality is, and I think I said this on a previous show, um, is that the society that we live in does not promote uh, fidelity, not at all, you know? Um, you know, and, and, and it, is, it does have to be a choice that you make. It's but again, you don't, we, we, we don't live in a society that says, be faithful to your husband. Be faithful to your wife. Be faithful to your community. Be faithful to your family. Be faithful to your job. It's all about get your needs met and move on. You know? Now, if you think I'm lying, go and look at all the television shows that we have on now and, and, and see how promiscuity and, and, and infidelity is promoted. You know, I always bring up that show, um, Scandal you know, that was on for five or six seasons. And it was, at the time, top five show every year. You know, and I remember protesting that show because, again, it glamorized the mistress. It glamorized infidelity. You know what I'm saying? And when I saw women, women cheering that on, I knew it was a sad state of affairs. And I get it because it's like, wow, now we're showing that we can do it. We're so used to seeing men do this, but now us women are empowered with it. But if you watch the development of that character, Olivia Pope, you know what I'm saying? She had a sad existence. True. And look at her background. Her dad and mom were murderers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's had a heck of a family tree. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And so... She didn't 
didn't have a good role model of a mom and dad, stable mom and dad in the home raising her. They taught her to be the boss chick, and she was. She was great at that. But then when it came to relationships, she failed miserably. And even there was a black senator who was in love with her, and she blew him off because what happened? He was given, he wanted to give her the happily ever after. But if I'm not used to happily ever after, that looks alien to me. Mm. And I don't want it. I'm used to chaos. Mm. I'm used to chaos. You know, I had a grand, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, and I talk about this often. He cheated on my grandmother and had five children outside the marriage. Oh, Lord. You know, and three of the women were my grandmother's friends. Oh, no. So imagine, think about your three closest female friends, um, ex, if you have any, you know. I do. <laughs> They're from, from women. And imagine them have, sleeping with your husband and having babies by him. I can't even imagine that. I, that's right. not something that could happen. Right. Right. And so that's why when folks, when we went to go and see that movie with Denzel Washington and Viola Fences and that scene where he admitted that he was having an affair and, and she said, well, I know now that I know you're going to break up with her, right? And he was like, no, no, she gives me my peace. Mm, mm, mm. And I, when I saw that scene, I saw my grandmother on that screen. I literally cried. My daughter, Anaya, was with me. She's like, Daddy. I said, Anaya, that's my granny up there. That's my granny up there. She had to endure that and stay with my grandfather and love him. And when he died, she was at the funeral crying, even though he beat her and cheat on her. Mm -mm. But that's what we're used to. That's a dysfunction that we have accepted. And I'm saying no more, no more. X, right now, I have 10 friends who are divorcing. 10. Wow. 10. The last time we talked, it was eight. A month later, I got two more on the list. Wow. We're not happy. We're not happy. And we're not happy with the person who we thought was going to give us, ensure us of our happiness. But guess what? You got to be self-fulfilled first. That's you exactly have to marry right. someone who's self-fulfilled. Yep. And then y'all bring the fulfillment together. Yep. Because that's and you compliment the love. You compliment yep. the love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you got women wanting men to be everything. And you got men who want a, um, 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 an extended mama. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's a little And if she fails, right, and if she fails or he fails, let me go out in the streets and find someone else because I want this void to be filled. Right. It's the void. It's that void. And they're looking for something outside of themselves to fill it. Absolutely. So then when we talk about the psychology, it's so much more than the physical. Infidelity starts and ends with the mind. Mm -hmm. It starts and ends with the mind. It's the belief system that I deserve what I want. And if you can't give it to me, I'll go somewhere else. I told someone a long time ago that I had a friend who was a constant cheater. And I had to relinquish that friendship. So somebody asked me, like, well, why would you end it? What do you got to do with it? If you would cheat on the person who you're supposed to be loved and committed to on a home with, and have children with, how are you going to be committed to our friendship? How do I know you won't try to talk to my girlfriend on the side? Huh. Because I had that happen. I had a real close friend, and he was a, uh, he was a habitual cheater. And he got that comfortable one day, when, and this was back in the 90s, before I was married. And my girlfriend, when we got in the car after leaving his house, she was like, Khalid, I think your boy was flirting with me. Wow. But he's so used. He was so used to whatever he woman that came in front of him he would have that he didn't have any boundaries. 
He didn't have any boundaries. So that's the other part to the psychological uh, mindset of infidelity. You have no boundaries. You have no moral fiber. It's, I want it because I can have it. And why not? So, X, you got women like you who say, you know what, I'll never mess with a married man. But you got 22 other women who will. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. We don't hold each other accountable. If I'm with a friend and he's telling me he about to cheat, I'm like, not on my watch, you not. Not on my watch, you're not. That's what we need to be doing. I remember a close person to me was getting married a few years ago, and I told them, do not get married. Please don't get married because you're still a man whore. Well, Khalid, see, here you go. Here you go. I'm committed now. No, you're not. Give me your cell phone right now. Will I find pictures of other women in your cell phone? Oh, man, I'm going to delete them before I get married. Sure enough, this close person to me contacted me last year. They're going through a divorce. Mm. But now a baby is involved. Mm -hmm. You see there? Mm -hmm. So now this young baby has to witness their parents be divorced because of mess. And now both the mom and dad, my friend and his, and his soon-to-be ex-wife, they have new. Uh, they they have new girl. They have a new girlfriend and boyfriend, they and they haven't even got divorced yet. Yeah, that's that seems to be how it happens. So let me say, ask you something else, because <clears throat> one of the things that I have talked about is being honest. I think that a lot of people are um, socially conditioned as well. You know, in some, um, what is it, the status levels of society, it is frowned upon, or let's say smiled upon if you are married and have the, um, it looks as if you have one mate. That's that's what your front looks like. Like you have this happily married couple. Because a lot of people, that's a front, you know, and they use that when they go out, you know, you're at networking events, you have business, you know, events or whatever. And so you have the front of the happily married couple. Uh, do you think that the pressure to present that happily married couple for status reasons, um, business, whatever, do you think that that, that is the pressure that makes people not able to be honest with what they truly want? Kind of like back in the day with, you know, uh, homosexuality and stuff, you know, um, uh, Art was on the show. He was actually my first special guest. And we talked about that whole thing and how you know, the whole gay, com the LGBTQ community has changed over the years. And he was saying when he was younger, you know, it just wasn't out like that. You didn't do that kind of stuff, you know, and now it's uh -huh. totally different. And so sometimes I feel that, you know, because we know for sure that monogamy is not natural, it's a choice. I feel like some people make that choice up front for the benefits that come along with the front of being married. And then they can't, it's not who they really are. I see men who are just naturally not monogamous. I don't care what you do with that man. You could put him with the best woman. He is just not monogamous. It's not going to happen. I know a man that's been married twice and he's always had a side chick and a girlfriend. He had the side yeah. chick, the girlfriend and the wife. He's always had three women. That is how he lived. That's how his dad lived. That is it's a prime example of people just not being monogamous. You can make a choice, but sometimes that choice is not really being true to who you are. Like I brought up the uh, LGBTQ community back in the day, they had to hide. And, and a lot of people committed suicide because yeah. it wasn't who they were. And so do you think if, if we were more accepting and allowing people to be who they are, maybe it would be the men would be able to say, okay, I'm not naturally monogamous, but I love to, for you to be part of my crew versus going through the emotional turmoil of getting involved with a man who says he's going to be monogamous, but that ain't who he really is for real. Now, there's some people like you, you know, you can say, okay, I'm going to be monogamous and then you will honor your commitment, but everybody isn't like that. And would it be better if we were more accepting of people saying, I'm not monogamous, but if you want to get with me and be part of the team, 
Come on. Okay. Do you want me to give you the honest answer or the, the make you feel good answer? I always want honesty. <laughs> I always want honesty. Right. Right. Um, one of it's going back to the psychology of um, infidelity or having an affair is this what makes cheating or makes infidelity heightened is because of the secrecy is because of no it's wrong that sex feels quadruple better because it's taboo does that make sense mm -hmm. If I have my wife's permission to cheat, then it takes away the. Mm, well, if you have your wife's infidelity, if you have your wife's permission, then it's no longer cheating. It, I, I know. Absolutely. Couples, I had no couples with uh, open marriages as well, and they've been married for extended periods of time. Matter of fact, I did a show on polygamy, and I actually uh, found two families that were polygamous. One had four wives. There was a guy that had four wives. Of course. The first one is legal and the other three were spiritual, but they all lived in the right. same house with common goals. Everybody had master's degrees and they were doing very well. Got you. And I guarantee you the husband has some other women on the side as well. Well, listen, he was already like close to 60. So I think them four. Oh, might be okay. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> right. he had been married to the first wife for 25 years. And then the second one was got like you. 17 it's like every seven years, he got another wife. He 25, 17, I think 10. And then there was a new one that had been around for like three or four years. Wow. Wow. So, so, so yes, it's, 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 it's still taboo. It's still not what we, like on the wedding day, no husband or wife per se goes in saying, I am going to step out on this relationship on that wedding day. On that wedding day, I get to hit the restart button and do this the right way. But think about the, the concept of getting married. What event takes place the night before or the, or the weekend before you get married? The um, bridal shower or the bachelor party where you celebrate yes. being single. <laughs> yes. 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 Yep. Think about that. You're about to get married. You're in the highest committed um, version of a relationship. But this one last time, let me step out and do wrong. And not only am I going to do wrong, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do wrong with my village watching me. And isn't it funny how you just said the highest form of relationship but why do we call it settling down? There you go. There you go. There you go. It's a mindset. It's a mindset with everything. So what happens is, X, is that we go in behind the eight ball. We go in. Now, the marriage, the, uh, the, the, the vows, we don't change the vows. We don't want to say, uh, 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 I will obey and, you know, from uh, um, sickness and health and da, 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 da. We don't want those old traditional ways because if you listen to those vows, they say, I am going to be ultimately and invigorously and, and focused on making sure I am everything for you. But then we say, oh, well, no, no. Hey, babe, I want to marry you. We, we doing this, and I love you. Let's get married. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's even an insult at your wedding when you make up these vows. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we don't even, and, 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 and then it goes back to now, let me bring my profession in. I'm telling people, Go into couples counseling before you get married, please. And I don't mean just do the church where you go and sit down with Pastor Johnson and he meets with you three or four times. I mean, go and hire a life coach. Go and hire a, a, a clinician and sit down and say, these are the things that we want to work on going into the marriage. This is, we want to be transparent 
before we change rings mm -hmm. so that we don't go in with a falsehood of the day after the wedding, we are Snow White and Prince Charming. Right. We want to go in saying, I got to work on these things. Right. I got to work on these things. I'm also telling couples, have therapy while you're married. Go and see a therapist maybe of three three or four sessions a year just to do touch-ups. You know what I'm saying? You get your car tuned up every year. You know what I'm saying? I do. So you I, go I, do I a physical. Right. You do a physical every year to make sure everything is right. Why not go and see a, 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 a professional, you know, and say, we need a tune-up real quick. Just for a few sessions. And for sure, if you're getting divorced, go and do family therapy prior to the divorce. Now, folks will be like, well, Khalid, that don't make sense. Yes, it does. Because what happens is now you're about to do a life-shattering um, activity. Mm -hmm. You're about to separate. You're about to move away. She's about to go back to her maiden name. You about to go and live in your mom's basement until you can afford to get you a condo or a townhouse. Your kids won't see either parent every day like they were so used to. Why wouldn't you want to come together and say, how do we do this right? X, when I got divorced, I immediately put me and my baby in counseling because I knew what this was going to do to both of us. And we met with the family therapist for three sessions. After the third session, he was like, Khalid, you and your daughter don't need to do in, uh, family therapy because y'all right tight. To be honest, I need your ex-wife in this room with your daughter mm. so I can see where they are at with each other. And then for sure, we did individual because I wanted Anaya to get it out without worrying about she going to hurt daddy's feelings or mommy's feelings. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to get it out because we let her down. We let her down. When you divorce, you let your kids down. It was not their fault. No, it wasn't their fault. But because of our selfishness, we destroyed their world. So you got men who divorce wives and forget that they got kids. Oh, that's deep and when so, it comes to the kids. Um, yes. So here's my thing. So, you know, I'm always adding what I'm thinking. And um, right. so my parents, I wish they had gotten divorced. I think they, I, it makes me really sad. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm getting emotional right now makes me really sad to see my mom now, you know, she has that advanced dementia. And so before it got really bad, uh, they forget what secrets are. They know what happened, but they, they forget that it's supposed to be a secret. And um, she, she told me a lot of stuff. And, you know, I realized my mom was very miserable while she was married. She was miserable. Yeah. It showed in, um, I look just like my dad. And my dad was one of the reasons yeah. she was miserable. But her choices were the primary reason that she was miserable. Because I told you, you know, you know some of my business anyway. But um, yeah. I do wish that they had not stayed together um, yeah. for my sake. Because they both would have been happier. And I think that I would have ultimately had better relationships with them individually if they didn't have to deal with each other's mess. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what, X, what would would have been even better if your daddy lived up to the promise he made to your mom. You know what I'm saying? See, why not put the work in? You know what I'm saying? Why not put the work? Why couldn't my granddaddy say, Catherine loves me more than she loves Jesus and God on Easter Sunday. <laughs> so let me be faithful to her. I have a good wife. I have four beautiful kids. Why do I got to go and sleep with my wife's friends? That's crazy. Imagine if my granddaddy would have did right. Then my mother wouldn't have been a mistress, ex. Then my aunties wouldn't have got with men who beat them, ex. Imagine if we did right. 
Oh, it's the, so, you know, this is definitely it is. because on the other hand, you know, you, you have to say, what if your grandfather had done truly right by himself and not by society Go. and said to the women, um, I am not monogamous. I have no desire yeah. to be monogamous, but I do love you and I want you in my life, but I want your friend in my life and that friend in my life. And I like this other chick mm. over here too. You know, what if he could have admitted who he was, but society don't let you do that. The society Correct. don't let you do that. Society don't let you, I can't get on air and be like, well, Khalid, you know, in real life, I'd like to have three men. Got you. I can't Absolutely. say that. Whether it's the truth or not. Now, I'm not saying whether it's the truth or not. I'm just going to let it hang. <laughs> 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 oh, that's another show. That's another show. But you know, you can't <laughs> say that and still have the respect of your peers and go through the ranks of your, you know, profession, have a professional view. If I get on air and say something like that, then all of a sudden I'm a um well, what's that word? That H E A U X. There, there you go. Right. You the way you want to. <laughs> So, you know, somebody right. don't, will not let us be who yeah. we may be. And so now we got to be married. And so now we marry, but down the road, who we are comes out. I know. I know. And again, that's what anything, you can wear a mask for only so long, but eventually that mask starts feeling suffocating mm -hmm. and you have to take it off. And the person who you are will manifest. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know? Yep. Um, you know, earlier I was talking to my, 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 my good friend, Ramonda, and we were talking about this thing about love versus loyalty, right? And how, wow, in my next relationship, I don't even need to hear the word love. I want to hear the word loyalty. That's important. Because I think that's a stronger word. Yep, it is a stronger word. That's a stronger committed word. Because I can love my house. I can love the, uh, the color of my skin. But loyalty says, I'm promised to you. I'm promised to the commitment. I promise because I'm loyal to me. Right. And I want my needs taken care of. So if I'm loyal to me, I can be loyal to everything about me. One of the things with me, with my friendships, if I find out you stab me in the back, I will let you go. I will let you go. I will pretend or I will make you think that you still matter, but you don't. Because the then is, I've forgiven you. But I'll never forget. Right. Because there's no reason not to be loyal to me. I will be everything to you as a friend. I will be everything to you as a boyfriend, as a husband. But the minute you think you have to be deceptive and deceive me, then I'm done with you. Because that tells me there's something wrong with you. So... I'm telling people now who can who are listening, ask for loyalty first. Because with the loyalty, the love will follow. Hmm. When love comes first, loyalty don't always follow. That's that's I think that could be true. That could be true. Because you can love someone and not be with them. I, I think loyalty, you have to be loyal to yourself first. You have to first yeah. you have to be truthful to yourself. And I think that when we talk about the psychology of the affair, yes. I think it starts with one, being truthful to yourself, two, yes. being, being healed. I think being yes. healed, and here's the problem. A lot of people don't realize they got a problem. They think everybody right. else is the problem, but yet right. they are looking for someone to validate them. They're looking for someone to love them because they don't love themselves. The only way they feel loved is because somebody else is loving them. They're looking for that approval to belong. And they don't realize that that's a problem. They don't realize right. that that's a problem. They don't realize why they right. are 
attracting certain types of people because you, well, you know, I'm, I'm in a different stuff. So you attract where you vibrate. And if you're vibrating on okay. a lower level, you're going to tr- attract on that lower level. Where you, Cause you, you can't attract Barack. You can't attract the Barack if you vibrating on the corner hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 And, 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 and X, let me throw this out here. Let me use me because I'm always going to use me. One of the tools that we use in, um, in therapy is self-disclosure. That's where the clinician uses a real life experience they've been through so that clients can know, hey, you're talking to a human that I know where you've been because I've been through it. So I just I did a, a documentary that's coming out about men and divorce. And in the um in the documentary, the guy the the, the interviewer, um, he says, Well, do you still love your ex-wife? And I said, Yes, I will always love Alisa because she gave me the greatest gift. Mm-hmm. Gifts. Let me put an S at the end. I got a home because I was married. I have I have a Naya, which is my legacy. And then when she divorced me and how she divorced me, she taught me the biggest lesson in the world. Stop walking around earth with rose colored glasses on. Mm. Because when you walk around with rose colored glasses on, you leave yourself vulnerable for people to smack them off of your face. <laughs> you said that with some trust passion. Me, my ex-wife smacked those rose colored glasses off. Yep. So now I look through clear lenses, right? So she gave me three gifts. I'm even today, I'm loyal to Lisa. Because I have to be. We share a child. Hopefully we're going to share grandchildren together. I would not want not one person to get out here and hurt us. Right. Because guess what, X? If she gets hurt, who eventually will really hurt? Anaya. Anaya. Mm-hmm. And because I want my daughter's life to be magnificent, hurt free, then I'm going to do what my part is to make sure that happens. See, that's what I mean about loyalty. That's what I mean about loyalty. Until loyalty is in place, I'm always going to have a job. And Xavier, we're going to have something to talk about. Well, we definitely going to have something to talk about. (laughs) As as long as humans are as flawed and imperfect as we are, as long as we do not see past ourselves, you know, and and see how people see us, that we are not perfect. We know we're not perfect, but we don't think we're really wrong. We got to look for that healing. I think it's going, yes, you and I both will always have a job. Yes. (laughs) Absolutely. I'll be here for you to have a show. (laughs) Absolutely. And then let me let me talk about this because you know, being a clinician, I'm sure you as a life coach, you have people that come to us all the time to talk about their hurt, their pain, their tragedy, and their trauma. Yes. Well, I was on vacation recently for the holidays for two weeks. And Xavier, every day I was on vacation, people were calling me friends and clients because the holidays whoa and then the holidays during a pandemic Mm. people are losing their minds some and i think i brought well no i didn't because it it wasn't this number between thanksgiving and christmas seven african-american men called me why x they had suicidal suicidal ideation moments Wow. And guess why, Xavier? Guess why? Why? Because of their wives. Wow. Seven men called me I because of money. No. Now, it, it was other things that they were dealing with, but the forefront issue was their wives. All seven of them were married. One of the gentlemen had the gun in the car. Ooh. One of them had the gun in the car. And luckily, he followed my direction 
and went to the emergency room and checked himself in, and he went, and he got diagnosed. But the thing that I told all seven of the men who called me, I said, you can never help what another adult does to you, sir. But what about the kids? You would leave your children because you and their mother don't get along? Sir. Sir. One of them broke down. He's like, Khalid, I didn't even think about my babies. Mm -hmm. I'm so hurt because of her. I didn't even think about my daughters and sons. Wow. Yeah, five kids. Wow. So if he would have if he would have committed suicide, three girls and two boys would have had to learn how to navigate this life without a daddy. All because mama and daddy weren't doing their thing that they should have. So, see, this is why I take infidelity so serious. This is why I'm the champion of do it the right way. Do it the right way. Because it affects everybody who's connected to you in your village. How can it not? If we all can go to a wedding and cheer you on, why wouldn't we be devastated when you divorce? So, you know, I, I have a story I want to share right here because uh, yeah. even 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 more so, not even more so, but along with having to navigate without a father. So I have a cousin um, and she was married. Uh, her and her high school sweetheart grew up and got married, right? Okay. And um, then they had a, a son. And um, she found out that he had been cheating on her. And so in turn, because um, they were still relatively young, they were in their 30s. So in turn, she was a good looking woman, you know, so she turned around and cheated on him. And um, he found out that she had cheated and he couldn't handle it. And so he called her up one day and shot himself in the head while he was on the phone with her. And... Wow. They, they had that son. And so not only navigating um, this world without a father, but there is some resentment that was towards my cousin. Well, my, the son is my cousin too, of course, but there was some yeah. resentment toward the mother because in the back of the kid's mind, you know, you hear the story in the family and you know that your dad killed himself because of your mother. And there's some resentment. Wow. There's resentment wow. towards that mother. So when the mother says, you need to do this, you know, the son is like, yeah, okay. You know, there's not a whole lot of respect. He gained more respect as she got older. But yeah. when he was a kid, there was so much resentment because she, he felt to some degree like she was the, well, I guess he would. She was the reason his yeah. father wasn't there, you know? Yes. So there was resentment. Yes. There was a lot of times where he wouldn't listen to her. And then, you know, her, her husband was a big guy. And so my their son is 6'4". You know, she's 5'8". Okay. He's 6'4", 200 and some pounds. And she's, you know, I mean, as a little kid, but as he got older. So there was like really nothing she could do with them. And that right. was really horrible. That resentment didn't allow him to really respect and listen to her. So he kind of raised himself. And that was not, that yeah. was really not a good place. So that, um, you know, if you have that come again, make sure you mention to them that the resentment that the kids are going to have toward the mother, and that's going to make it really hard for those kids to respect her enough to listen. Because I, I grew right. up watching that whole thing unfold. Right. Well, the thing is, X, what I'm proud of, what I'm happy is seven black men picked up the phone. Yes. Because typically, and you ask any clinician, you know, who's been doing this for a little while, we don't get black men calling. You know what I'm saying? So for seven men to call and say, I need help, that's fantastic. And what we're understanding, I think what this pandemic has done, it has shifted our mindset. OK, it says that, wow, we're vulnerable and there's nothing that we can do. But I don't like feeling vulnerable. 
because vulnerability makes you feel powerless. And with these couples, the reason why my the practice is busy is because these couples had to sit down with each other. I couldn't go out and mess with my mistress. I couldn't go out and mess with my mister because, hey, I got to be at home because of a pandemic. So it forced them to look each other eyeball to eyeball. And they said to themselves, I really don't like you no more. Dang. But I love you and I want to try to make this work. Okay, let's call Khalid Scott. So Khalid now is in the six, the six figure family now because I'm making money off of marriage and misery. Ain't that something? And then, yes. you know, you, you're happy with your success, but on the other hand, you just like, man, it, it's like a dog in yes. store sometimes, you know. Absolutely. Your hurt and pain. Yeah, yeah. But you're Absolutely. helping. You're, you're helping. Yes. You're helping. Yes. And that's the most yes. important part. Absolutely. And I'm sure the audience and you could hear my passion as I talk. Absolutely. Because, because ex, I grew up seeing my mother being a mistress. So from age two to 18, Mr. Lee was my dad. And when he broke up with my mom when I was 18, I had to deal with a loss. Mm -hmm. That wasn't fair to me. So that's why I'm saying when you do wrong, you got to think about not only how it's going to deal, how it's going to make you feel, but the people who are around you. So I had to deal with the secondary trauma of losing another dad. Wow. You know? And yeah. then, wow, my mother never got a chance to be somebody's wife. She never got a chance to be somebody's wife. Why? Because she watched her dad beat her mother. She watched her dad cheat on her mother. So my mother had the mentality, no one will ever put me in that situation. I'm going to run them. So see, I grew up with Olivia Pope. Mm. But again, my mother had to celebrate Valentine's Day on the 15th. She had to celebrate Christmas on the 26th. And that ain't fair to nobody. Wow. That ain't fair to nobody. And let me tell you, when I grew up in my mid-20s ex, I started to be attracted to married women. Oh, no. Nah. But I stopped myself. But think about it. I grew up with infidelity all around me. Right? Yeah. So when I was 25 and I had a, a breakup, I was like, oh, okay. Man, I got a six pack. My waistline is 30 inches. You know, I'm a frat guy. I got black curly hair. I'm six foot tall. Let me do what the fools out here are doing. But see, I went on a date with a married woman and I, I said, uh oh, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Khalil, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I stopped myself. But think about what the seed that was planted in my head. So if we plant these seeds, if we're planting these seeds, someone is going to come behind and cultivate and water, and they're going to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, with a rose, the roses are one of the most beautiful flowers in the world. But what's attached to those roses? Man, them thorns will get you. Man, they man. Hurt. They hurt. <laughs> man, they hurt real bad. But they're underneath the beauty. See there? Mm -hmm. And that's life. The top part is beautiful, but what's on the bottom is hurt and pain. We got to switch this. So one of my friends, he's a professor, he said, well, Khalid, I don't want to hear another show just glamorizing infidelity. I said, sir, you know better than that. You know I'm going to talk about what do we do next? So that's what I want to address now before we wrap up. What is the next step? Okay. Okay. So someone may say, well, 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 Khalid, I'm a habitual cheater. And I've had a husband say this in session. How do I make myself stop? Right? I said, well, how do you start your healing? 
How do you start your healing? Because the broken man in you is the man who goes out and cheats. The healthy man that you want to become will be the one who stays his black self home. Mm -hmm. Think about that. My mother was a mistress because she was broken, ex. Right. No healthy person. No, and let me say it again so everyone can hear. No healthy person does anything to bring hurt and pain and despair on them on purpose. Mm -hmm. When you're healthy, you only do healthy things. You only do healthy things. Or if you have a mishap, you get back on your soul. A bodybuilder will go and have a pizza day, but you better believe he's going to take a bottle of x lax and he's going to be in the gym the next morning. Because <laughs> he's going to get that garbage out of his stomach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep, that and he's going to do it pretty quick. <laughs> so that's how we first, we start healing the broken person first. Right. Then we start looking at what has this, how has this devastated? How has my actions devastated me and my family? Because now I've got to hold the mirror up to you. So you got to hold the mirror up. Yes. You got to hold the mirror up. Yes. And you got to have yourself accountable. And then for the spouse or the mate who has been cheated on, let me, let me throw this out real quick. When I married Lisa, one of the things I remember, she knew I had a gang of female friends, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, Khalil, let me just go and make this real clear to you. And my ex-wife is five foot four and 95 pounds, right? Oh, okay. And I'm six foot, 200 plus pounds, right? She looked me eyeball to eyeball. She said, Khalil, do you like this life we have? I'm like, Lisa, what the hell is you talking about? What, what are you talking about? Khalid, I'm going to ask you the question. Do you love this life we have with me, you, Anaya, the house, everything? I said, of course I do, babe. Cheat on me, and you, I will show you what hell looks like. Mm. She said it with a seriousness, X. She looked me in my eyes eyes and said it so i understood the assignment mm. don't ever cheat on me khalil or i will destroy your world and she a scorpio so i believe her <laughs> them scorpio something else come on <laughs> so we didn't divorce because of infidelity <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so guess what ladies that that husband or mate of yours who cheats Tonight, cook him a meal, his favorite meal. Have your breast underneath your chin while he's eating that favorite meal. <laughs> and let him know, if you like this happy life we have, don't ever step out on me again. Or I'm gone. But when you make the threat or the promise, you got to mean it. You do have to because it. what happens is we teach people how to treat us. Yep. If I cheat on you and you take me back, you have now given me permission to do it again. I'll just be slicker about it. Okay. I'll just be a little more careful about it. And then pray. Pray for strength. Okay. Pray for strength, because you're going to have to. And, and and it's so much more, but, you know, we're going to have a part two to this. Okay, I, I had a feeling we were going to have a part two, because we got the next segment. Everybody is in the building for the next segment, too. This is right. a great show. When is your next show, Khaled? Our, 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 my show with you is every first Friday of every month. Yep. I believe that will be February, maybe the, uh, let's look it up, February the 4th at 12 noon um, Central um, Standard Time. And I want to do maybe part two to this and then Valentine's Day. Okay. Does it exist? You know, so 
we're going to talk about fidelity and we're going to go back to love and relationships. And does it really exist? Does it really exist? Because again, I'm on team loyalty now.